But this is a setup. We've got dual batteries. I took these out of my truck and replaced them. Uh, these batteries aren't the greatest, but they work pretty good for this. Got a nice cutoff switch at the auto parts store. Um, running a charger. For this test, um, I'm only, it's only drawing 9 amps, so this charger can keep up. So the voltage stays pretty good. And when I try to draw a lot of amps, the charger can't keep up and the voltage drops. But anyway, it works. Uh, this other charger, I'm just doing de-rusting electrolysis on some other stuff. So, here's the rack that holds the reservoir. It's the bubbler. This hose was a little long, so I just snaked it around the back. This is just a check valve, so when the thing cools down, it sucks air through here instead of uh, sucking the electrolyte or the the bubbler water back. Um, automotive filter, that's the same one I've used uh, all this time, just to catch any debris that's in there. It really hasn't caught much yet. I don't like using brass, but it's the only thing I could come up with the neck down to this really small tubing. And then, of course, the electrolyte comes down through here into the bottom, zigzags back and forth. That's what did I do? The electrolyte comes through here to the bottom and zigzags back and forth. This is the temperature uh, pyrometer. It's probably going to read a couple degrees cooler than it should because it's not deep inside there. The tip of it is about right here. The, the HHO comes up through here, bubbles up, and it continues to bubble through the electrolyte. Comes back over through here to the bubbler, then down to the, the um, HHOometer or whatever you want to call it. Um, if you look at my assembly videos, you'll see that I have four connections on each plate, each positive plate, and four connections on each negative plate at the corners, and the positives are connected in the middle of each side. Distribute that voltage around. Really didn't seem to make much difference here. Um, and then these are 12 gauge finely stranded wire connected to a 6 gauge which is way overkill for 10 amps. I was hoping to get it to draw more than that. Um, that's about it. I just have to ignore the rest of the mess. Let me get pan back here. There is this whole thing in its splendor with all the junk around it. Hello YouTube, this is Mars 1952 on the second test on this unit. Um, I added four more teaspoons of sodium hydroxide that makes it the concentration around 12 teaspoons per gallon. I don't know exactly what it is because I was using recycled electrolyte. But anyway, it's really strong, a lot stronger than I wanted, but I'm trying to get this to uh, pull some amps. Right now it's pulling, looks like 11.75 um, amps. Uh, 43 degrees C. The temperature is still climbing after I added that last electrolyte. Um, it, now it's going back down again. So uh, once again I heated it up to about 71 degrees C, poured it in there, started circulating. Uh, you know, It gradually heats up to a certain point and then it starts to cool back off because it, it's not maintaining its own heat. So I'm going to test this again at that stronger electrolyte level see what happens. We're up to about 11.75 amps, 43 degrees C. I don't think it's going to get any hotter than that. It'll start cooling off here pretty soon. 13 volts on the nose. I double checked that again. And the ambient air temperature is 16 degrees C. Alright, so I'm going to try to start this video, uh, start the stopwatch up. And hold that so you guys can see it. go. I'm thinking that the um, vent hole on the top is a little restrictive. Probably those little tubes are restricting it too much. And also it has to work against the stack of electrolyte in the reservoir. You can see that the temperature of the gas is not coming up. The HHO is still 16 degrees C. I've got the thermocouple stuck in the tube right before it goes into the, uh, the flow meter. 
I cannot look at the camera and hold all this stuff at the same time, so I'm hoping you can see everything. All right. A few more seconds here. Okay, 1 minute 16.8. I thought I got that pretty close considering I was fumbling around. So that is 76.8 seconds, 13 volts, 11.75 amps. Okay, I will calculate the MMW and put it on as an M annotation. Hello again. Um, still testing this new dry cell. Um, I noticed uh, when I was doing these earlier tests, uh, the more electrolyte I added, the uh, worse the MMW got. Now the MMW is not terrible, but I was hoping for better. Um, so I'm going to try one more test before I tear this down. It's going to be with a weak electrolyte. So since all the electrolyte I have is strong, um, I'm going to make some new one. Now I dispose of my, I, actually I haven't disposed of any electrolyte yet. I'm just keeping it in a bucket. And uh, I put it underneath the workbench where no animals can get to it. And uh, it'll evaporate. The water will evaporate, and the if there is any or hexavalent corrosion in there, it will just concentrate in the water, whatever is left. Eventually, it'll get completely dry. I have had buckets dry out on me before. So I'm going to make a new batch of electrolyte with one gallon of distilled water from the um, dehumidifier. I've accumulated about 30 gallons of water. I'm really hoping to start actually burning it pretty soon. Um, it, at the rate of uh, production I have right now, it take a long time to burn up 30 gallons. But I'm hoping to get that production up. All right, so this is going to be one teaspoon of sodium hydroxide in a gallon. I'm going to heat it up and uh, start a new test. Okay, I'm back. I've heated up my weak electrolyte to um, 160 degrees F. Is That's something like 71 degrees C. I'll post the numbers, exact numbers in annotation. Um, I'm going to pour it in here. Start the thing up. And um, when it stabilizes, I'll do an MMW test. All right, I'm back. The temperature has actually started to drop a little bit. It went up to 45, now it's dropped to 44. So I'm getting ready to start the test. Got my finger on the hole. One, two, three, start. All right, so this is going to be sort of slow because I'm only drawing 5.5 amps, 13 volts still. It's steady on 13 volts. Now the air uh, HHO is a little warmer this time. It's, um, of course, maybe it's just the outside air is 18 degrees. So I know I've mentioned this before, but a lot of you guys jump around and don't watch the whole thing, so I'm going to say it again. Uh, this generator is not maintaining temperature. It's, it's pretty efficient, which is a good thing, but it's not creating enough heat to keep itself going. So I'm going to have to heat this with engine coolant. But to bench test it, I have to heat the electrolyte up on the stove and give it a quick test before it cools down. Um, it cools down pretty rapidly. All right, we're coming up on it now. 2 minutes 43 seconds. I'll do the calculation and uh, put it on here as an annotation.